I, I think we need to give just a bit of a history lesson first before we get into it. Um, I'm almost tempted to say, those of you that have not done web development prior to this class, close your ears, go outside, get a breath of fresh air, cup of coffee, drink of water, because I don't want to tempt you into bad habits that occurred during the past. All right? Long time ago, and by a long time ago, you know, 10, 11, 12 years ago, um, the browsers did not support CSS particularly well. Okay? In fact, you know, so, so all the coding was done in HTML. So the question became, how do you set the layout of your page? Because without CSS, all the web pages just, boom, are sort of linear. Start at the top and go down to the bottom. Sort of like the first web pages that you did in this class. Well, some clever web designers at the time took the notion of using, or rather misusing, an HTML tag for tables. All right? And they used tables to create layouts. When I talk about a table, what am I talking about? I'm essentially talking about a structure where there are rows and columns. So like an Excel worksheet, you know. So an example of a table might be something like um, your schedule of classes for the semester. So there might be a column for the course number, a column for the course name, a column for the days and time, a column for the room, and a column for the instructor. So, CISS 216, name web development, days and times, Tuesdays and Thursdays, room BU 105, instructor Zellers. Then you might have accounting 151, intro to accounting, and so on and so forth down the line for all the courses you have. This is like something that you'd have in an Excel worksheet. It's a table, all right? Rows and columns, all right? And like in scientific literature, they would say, like in a paper, see table one, two, three for information about such and such. So that's what a table is, rows and columns. What web developers did, though, is they said, well, you know what? We can take this notion of rows and columns and really stretch it out. And we could make, say, a two-by-two two table. And we could put our logo here, and our banner here, and our navigation here, and our content here. And lo and behold, instead of having these boring linear pages, we had a page where we could control the layout. All right? Well, what's wrong with that approach? I mean, at the time, it was the only approach you could do. So it's not like I'm faulting folks for doing that. But what do we see now that's wrong with that approach? Yeah, it's very inflexible, right. In other words, you may get it to work on a desktop machine, but on a mobile device, it's not going to look particularly good. Depending on the size of the screen, it's not going to look particularly good. And if you change your mind, it's not, it's not going to be easy to change. Remember how we went and we changed the layout of all our web pages simply by changing a single CSS file. All right? If you baked in a table into all your web pages, you'd need to change all of the web pages to do that. In addition, web developers took this a step further and like subdivided each of those sections into little tables and had tables inside of tables. And the code just got to be a mess. All right? It was very difficult to maintain. And you'd have to go and change it on every single page. So the reason I bring this up is some folks, this is how they learn how to do it. So again, this is a practice popular 10, 12 years ago. 
depending on when and where you learned web development, you could have learned this even fairly recently. All right? But I'm here to tell you no. Don't do it this way. So if you ever see a table used this way, or if you've ever done it in the past, no, wrong. Don't do it that way. It's very inflexible. We know now that the way to do this would be through CSS. So for example, it would create a head section that may contain a logo and a banner, or a header section rather, that would contain a logo and a banner. A nav section, and then maybe an article or a section or whatever to contain the main content. That being said, tables are still used on websites. Why? Because you need to represent a table of data. You need to be able to represent that. And if you think through it, with the tags that we've learned so far, that would be very hard to do. All right? Let's go and let's try to do it. Let's go in and try to make a table of data. And I know it's not showing yet. I want to get a good starting point here. All right. There. All right. Let's say I wanted to put the schedule in. Now, we know already we can't do this, right? You might think, gee, I'll do this. Course number. Now, let me put some spaces over. Name of the course. Let me put some spaces over. Day, time, room, and instructor. I think we can see that this is doomed to fail, right? CISS 216, name, web development. Yeah, better space that over a, bit, a little more. Day and time, Tuesday and Thursday. Room BU 105, Instructor Zellers. And then I'll just duplicate this. We'll pretend you're taking another course. Now we know that that's doomed to fail, right? How's this going to look? It's going to be one long string of da data, right? Because HTML, for good reason, ignores that white space. It does it that way on purpose, so this is not like a bug or anything. It does it this way so we can format our code in a manner that's very readable, and the browser will display it. Now, you could try to get really clever with this, and use a break tag you could even use a tag that's called the non-breaking space tag which actually puts extra spaces there unlike HTML white spaces And you could try to do it that way to get it to lay out. But that's not a good idea either. All right. See, I kind of got that first one lining up by putting in the non-breaking spaces and the breaks and all that. But still, that's not a good idea. I don't even know why I'm wasting my time showing you these bad ways to do it. Because right? they're not going to work, they're not going to be very flexible, and so on. So this is a case for a table. Again, even if we meticulously went and spaced everything out, first of all, that would be based on our browser window and our default, default fonts, and on a different window with different default fonts, it's liable to look different and different sizes. And th This is fraught with disaster. In addition, if you were to go in and try to make any kind of changes 
that, that would be a very fragile sort of design. In other words, one little change that you make could mess things up in a bunch of places. So, what do we do instead? We create a table. All right? So, we said before that a table consists of rows and columns of data. All right? So, you can almost imagine um, what some of the tags are going to be. All right? First of all, there's a tag for the table to say, hey, what we have here is a table of data. All right? Treat everything between the start and end table tag as a table. All right? We have a tag for table rows. All right? In other words, this, this particular table has three rows. One, two, three. So there's a tag for table row. For table column, it's a little bit different. Because there's really, if you look at a table, there's really two kinds of table cells or table columns. All right? This is, a, this is like a, a heading for the table. In other words, that is, is telling me that this is, you know, this is different than this. This is telling me, hey, this is a course number. This actually is a course number. And so on down the line. So there's actually two tags to, to identify the specific cells of a table. All right, and there's table headers and table data. So the basic four tags for tables, and again we'll add a few. We'll add a few in later. You know, kind of specialty, uh, not specialty, but but like you know, a little more detailed tags. But so sort of like the bare minimum of tags that you're going to have with a table will be a table tag. a TR tag, and then either TDs or THs, depending on the kind of data that is in that cell. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Typically a row is either TDs or THs. You're not going to have a mix of TDs and THs. I just put it up there just to show that a row could contain TDs or t THs. But typically, if it's a row, it's either going to be all headers or all data. All right. So let's go and let's create this table that I drew up before. I'll put a table tag here. And a table tag is a collection of rows. So I'll put my TR tag. And then my first row of data is going to be headers. So I'm going to use TH tags for those. First row in my table is a header row. So I'm going to use TH tags for those. Each subsequent each subsequent row then is going to consist of TDs. Oops.
now. I'm going to go and I'll clone this table, or I'm cl I'll clone this row a couple times just to add a couple more courses in here. Now if we look at it, it looks like that. All right. Let's observe a couple things about this. First of all, how can you tell visually the THs versus the TDs? THs are bold. It might not be obvious because of the data, but the THs are also centered. All right. The most apparent column that you can see that on is the name. All right, notice the name is centered over, over the column of names. Question, how big did that table end up being? What's the size of that table? How is the size of that table determined? Let me put it that way. In other words, the, the table, pardon me? Well, the number of cells does come into play, but for example, this table goes from here to here, if I highlight it. How come it doesn't go from here to here? Does it right size itself to here? Exactly. It sizes itself, in other words. Um, each column is as big as it needs to be to fit in the biggest entry. So, for example, if you notice, daytime is a smaller column than name. Why? Because the biggest value in that column is the header, daytime. Whereas the biggest value in the name column is web development. So, web development is a, is a longer word than day slash time, so that column takes more, more space. All right? So really, the size of the table is the sum of the size of the columns. The size of the columns is determined um, by default, all right, to be the size of the biggest thing in that column, which is exactly how you'd want it to be, sort of. I, I can't imagine you wanting it to be anything else. So in other words, if I put in something really long in the room then that room column becomes a lot bigger. And again, yeah, I should have undo that. Notice now we can see that room is centered, that title is centered. The reason that these don't appear centered is because the column is just that, exactly that big, right? So it is centered, it's just there's no space on either side of it, right? So it's, it's effectively centered in that. Now remember, though, remember that this is the default behavior that I'm describing. All right, which means that all these things that relate to the appearance of the, 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 the table can be controlled via your CSS. So you're not, you know, you're not forced to live with these constraints. You can size a table any way that you want to and you can position a table any way that you want to. All right. Notice again that the way this lines up is strictly based on the position of the column. In other words, 
I know that Zellers is the instructor because instructor is the fifth header and Zellers is the fifth piece of data in this column. So it's all based on the number of columns, the position of the columns. All right. That's sort of the basic HTML of tables. We'll get into more involved examples. Question? You didn't have like, a value for one of those if you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Just like you can have it. What you would actually do, like for example, if you didn't know who the instructor was right. and you didn't want to cheat and put the word staff like, <laughs> like they do, what you'd actually do is you'd put a non-breaking space like this. Or let's, let's do it, let's, like if there was no room for this one, we didn't know which room. You wouldn't want to get rid of that row because it would shift that over and it would put me under there. You really don't want to do that either, all right? Um, it probably would work. Um, I know for a fact on older browsers that could be problematic. Newer browsers might handle it differently. I'm just remembering, you know, the bad old days, you know, where empty table cells the browser didn't like. So what you can do in here is put in what I showed before, ampersand NBS, NBSP, semicolon. doesn't look any different, but it's probably a better solution. You're putting a blank in that table spot then. Now you can get more involved. You can also combine columns and combine rows. Generally speaking, you want to try to keep your table simple, um, but you can do some of those things too. For example, in some cases, let's go in and add a, a footer line to say that this person has three classes. So, if I were to go in here, and I could say, let's say I want to do that put a cell on the bottom that says you're taking three classes. Or like a total, you know, if you had your tuition charge on here, the tuition for this one is $200, $300, $400, the sum is 1000 or whatever. If I do this, it's going to try to cram all that into the first cell because there's only one TD there. What I can actually do is I can put in what's called a call span. And I can say, this one column actually counts for five columns. All right. And, and in that way, it will go over all five columns, as opposed to just all being forced into one column. So you can do that. You can also do it with row span too. If, for example, you know, let's say I'm take, you know, I'm teaching these two classes, or Norad's teaching these two classes. So I don't want to put Norad twice. I could do something like this. I could say Norad. Then I could say row span equals 2. And then notice how NORAD is sort of between those two. I usually avoid that. I mean, I would just list NORAD twice then if he taught those two classes. I, you know, I guess some folks would prefer the other way, but I don't too often use the call span or row span. Let me rephrase that. I do on occasion use the column span like for total lines at the bottom. So I could merge, blend those columns together um, to form a message. I very rarely use row span though, although you can do it. Question. Any questions about this? Your 
be better. Try and keep these all together. You can use a column span for some sort of header naming convention for your column. And that way, whenever you make any other adjustments, it stays with the uh, table. So if you make some adjustments for CSS, let's say you put schedule of classes as a column span above your right. Actually, something like that, there's actually, um, and again, the, the specific tag escapes me, I think is a caption. I can put a caption on a table that says what it's for. So I could do that. In fact, let me, I think it's caption. So for that, strictly speaking, it would be better to use a caption tag for. But I hear what, you, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. If, if you did want a header that went across, for example, in the data you could have um, day, time as two separate columns. You might want the header just to say date, time, and then span two columns. But as far as that goes, you could you, you could do this as a caption. And then it appears like that. Right. Right. Again, I think I've said this before. And I mean I I, I, I say it kinda a little bit tongue in cheek, but you don't want to lie to your browser. Alright? So what you described, maybe it's just a fib, maybe it's not a, a, a lie, but in a way, you align your browser a little bit. Yeah. Because you'd be telling your browser, I have these column headings, when it's really a description of the entire table. So it's really not column headings. And so if you put it in the TH and said call span of five, you'd be fibbing a little bit. Really, that's the caption of the table, so you should use the caption tag. It sounds like such strong words, don't lie to your browser. And you're lying to your browser if you do that. But, but the idea is, is, is use the tags the way that they were, uh, the, the way that they were intended. All right? and, and that kind of strategy gives you the most flexibility going forward both in terms of styling it and in terms of cross-platform compatibility and so on. So, now, as far as styling this goes, all right, remember, it's always going to be that your The appearance of anything on your page is going to be a combination of the styles that you give it and the default behavior of the browser. And a table is a great example of that. All right? Because, let's say for example, I give this table a width. All right? Now for simplicity, I'm just going to put the CSS right in the HTML document. We all know that that's probably not the best thing to do. And again, to keep it simple, I'm going to say table. So I'm going to make all my tables have a width of... Let's try with a number first, an absolute fixed size, 600 pixels. All right, what can we observe there? Well, the width is now 600 pixels, right? Uh, assuming that that's 600 pixels. What about the respective column sizes? Are all the columns the same size? No. How did it decide which columns to make 
bigger and which columns make smaller. It's again based on the size. So in other words, I defined my part of the, 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 the appearance of the, of the table was to say I want it total to be 600 pixels. The browser's default behavior then went and decided how big to make each of the columns. In other words, I gave the browser 600 pixels to work with. It figured out how to divide them. What's the browser's innate default behavior? To size things proportionally based on their size. All right? So in other words, the bigger, the, the columns with more data got more of those 600 pixels than the, the, the columns that had less data. All right. Now we can see even more confusion if we make it a percent. So that's about the same, right? Because this is about a thousand uh, pixel um, monitor. If I make it smaller, though. I'm not making it smaller. I'm dragging that line, whatever that line is. If I make it smaller, though, notice it still goes, and it's making them, it's more or less keeping them proportional. In other words, the name and course number columns are bigger than the daytime room. But notice at a certain point, then, it's not going to make the room column any smaller, or the daytime, or whatever. If necessary, it breaks it down into two lines. And that's another example of the default behavior of this, which is probably a behavior you don't want to override, is the fact that um, the table tags aren't going to cut off anything. So for example, no matter how small I make this, it's never going to make that room column smaller where it would cut off part of the room. All right? Oh yeah, there's, you know, just about anything we've talked about styling-wise. So we could give a minimum width of the table to avoid that sort of thing. All right. Um, notice also that where it can, it actually breaks and, and, and puts it on two lines. So notice as I get a certain width, course number is going to break and it will be on two lines, course and number. Web development is going to break between web and development. Now it's not going to break any of these other fields because there's no spaces in those other fields. And it's not going to go in like, well I guess potentially it could do Tuesday and Thursday, but this guy will keep it from doing that. But it's not going to like put part of the word instructor on one line and part of it on another. It's only going to do that where there's spaces. So again, as I get very small, boom, web development and course number go on to two separate lines. All right. Again, I, th I think tables is one of the most dramatic cases of you'll see that you can put some styling on it and the browser will also put some style on it. Now, let's say I want to make the columns evenly sized. All right. Now I have how many columns? One, two, three, four, five. I could make the, how do you suppose I would make the columns evenly sized? Specify a width for a column. What tag would I do? Well, I could either do TD or THs. I'm going to do THs because both of them are integral in, in the size of the column. So I'm going to say TD with 20%. All right, so now the columns are equally sized. And as I make this bigger and smaller, it keeps them equally sized and it might put 
that, that on two lines or might put it on one line, but it keeps those relatively equally sized. Now, at this width though, notice it's not equally sized. All right. Why? Because it doesn't want to cut off the word development. So it gives that column just a wee bit extra space so as to not cut it off. And again, that's a good thing. Right? That's a good thing that it does that because we wouldn't want to cut it off. But at slightly bigger sizes, we'll notice that, that all these are the same size. Now you might say, I'm going to give my browser a headache. And, and what if I made everything 50%? All right, I have five columns, each of them 50% of the available space. Haha, <laughs> we'll see what the browser does with this one. That was kind of a weak, evil laugh that was intended to be like a ha <laughs> ha yeah, maniacal laugh. But what does it do? Well, it kind of throws its arms up and, and figures out what to do. All right, so in other words, it's trying to give those the amount of space, but it really can't, so it kind of does it proportionally. And we're, we're pretty much back to where we were before. Um, if we give a width, let's say, of 100, um, let's, yeah, let's give a width of 100 pixel for each of the columns. All right. We'll notice that. Let's try 75. Well, again, if you're telling it something that it, it can't do, or giving it conflicting information, like I want the total width to be this, but each individual this, then it does its best shot to, to fit everything in, and, and it figures out how to uh, divide things proportionally. Now, what, if, what do you suppose is going to happen if I do this? Let me get rid of the width on the table. Let me put a TD width of 100, or a TH width of 100 pixels. So, the table has no width associated with it. Each TH has a width of 100 pixels. All right. So it stays at 100 pixels again and unless it gets too small, then it proportionally sizes them. What do you suppose is going to happen if I go and I put a TD having a width of 200 pixels? If it can, right. In other words, if there's available space, it will go and it will make that bigger. All right. Now again, if there's no longer available space, it'll make it smaller. Why? Because again, the width of a column is depending on the biggest thing that you got. So if I give a style on the TD that's bigger than the style on the TH, it's going to take the style that's on the, P, on the TD, provided it can. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to putting a style on the table of... a certain percentage. I guess one point, and I think I've made this point before, but I like to repeat it now, is be careful not to try to micromanage the CSS. 
and to control every single little tiny aspect of everything. The browser has some great innate default behavior. I mean, we're showing examples of this, how the browser is smart and figures out like how to arrange things not to cut stuff off and, and so on. So a lot of times, that's good. And, and you want to go with that. So I would say avoid uh, micromanaging uh, the CSS. There's a term that, that designers use, and again, a lot of folks, a lot of early folks in web design came from other uh, forms of graphic design, like, like magazine design or, or whatever. And a lot of those folks, you know, when you design a magazine, you're designing it for like a certain size page, right? You can get it look exactly the way you want to. In other words, if you're designing the cover of Time magazine, it's not as though one person's going to buy a version of Time magazine that's this big and another version that's this big. They're all the same size. So you can get the layout dead on exactly the way you want to. Now, a lot of designers carry that attitude into web design to say, I want my design to look like I want it. I don't want no extra spaces here. I don't want no breaks, any breaks between words, and so on and so forth. And again, the, 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 the phrase for that, they wanted it pixel perfect. They wanted it to match the pixels exactly the way they had it laid out in their head. It's pro that's probably not the best attitude for, for web developers to have. All right? You have to acknowledge that there is likely to be some differences depending on the platform, on how it looks, and, and so on. And that's just something you live with. All right? My bigger message then is, you know, sometimes it's, you know, let the browser do its job. You don't have to control everything. Some stuff is okay to let go and let the browser defaults kick in. All right. So a lot of times, and again, this is, this is something that, that a lot of times I see my better students do, is they'll think, wow, I know this CSS stuff. I'm going to control it down to every single character on the page. Well, sometimes it's better to let the browser's default behavior kick in. All right. Let's talk about more stuff with this table. More stuff with this table. I can certainly give um, different... Uh, uh, attributes like as far as color goes for it. So I could, for example, make the background of this table yellow. I could do something with the caption of the table. Now, another example of lying to your browser. Let's say I decided I wanted things like the course number, not the title for the course number, but the actual course numbers to be centered and bold. You might say to yourself, well, I'll just make them th tags in. Th tags are centered and bold. Wrong. That's lying to your browser. It's not a header, it's data, all right? And as such, if you want it centered and bold, you go and you put the CSS in there to make it centered and bold. So, I'd go in here and say, TD, text align, center, font weight, I think. Bold. All right. Pardon me? 
That does all of them, right. Well, the, my assumption is I did want to do all of them. Ah, okay. Okay, good question. I, I see what you're saying. If I wanted to do just the course number, what would I do? I'd put a class on them, right. So maybe I don't want all of the, the TDs. Maybe I just want the, um, those TDs that represent courses. So I would go in here and say class equals course. Oops. Remember, you always have the you, you always have a uh, you have a bunch of different ways that you can define a selector. All right. And there you go, that, that one then is bold. All right. There's a lot of ways that you can define a selector. You can define it, define it via HTML tag based on um, a class, based on an ID, or based on a variety of mixing and matching those things. So for example, in this case, I said any TD that has an ID of course, I want to do that too. Strictly speaking, I could have gotten rid of the TD because I've only assigned that to TDs and it would be equivalent. Likewise, on occasion, especially with wider tables, let's make this have a width of 100%. Especially with wider tables on a big monitor, your eye has a tendency to like travel up or down a little bit, right? So, for example, you know you're looking across that. If the if if you could imagine there being a bunch of rows here and a wide monitor, your eye might drift up or down a line, all right? So what people used to do in the old days with computer paper is they'd, they'd have alternating colors on the paper. In other words, it would be a, a white sheet of paper, but they'd be like, yeah, white, green, white, green, white, green. All right? Green bar paper, right. So we could do something similar here. Yeah, there you go. Uh-oh. What about, what about if we mentioned punch cards? Would anyone... Oh, okay, yeah, me too. All right. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. What if I want to make alternating rows in this table a different color? How would I do that? Yeah, I could, I could assign it uh, odd, odd and even. If I really wanted to be lazy, I'd only have to do one of them, right? Because I could go in... I'm going to go and add a bunch of rows here. If I wanted every other one to be a different color, let's say, I could just create a alt class. And give a background. of white and then just assign that class to alternating rows. I have I have that. Questions over any of this? Now you might say, gee, isn't that a pain to go in and you have to put that alt thing in there? 
Yeah, it is. But do keep in mind that a lot of the bigger web pages you developed will be not written by you in HTML, but will be written by you in some server-side language. Which means that you may be writing the code to read a database to pull the list of courses and your program will create this table. Your program will loop through all the courses and create the table. All right. If you're doing that then, it's pretty simple to make alternating rows. It's not like you have to go in for a thousand different table rows and do that. You'll have one if statement that will say if even apply this class, if odd, apply this other class or, or, or something along those lines. So don't panic about that. Again, you have the same sort of flexibility with this that you have with all of these. Again, I don't go over all the stylings you can do with tables simply because, um, you know, a lot of the things that we talked about, you know, to do change the font, you know, the same way, all right, that you would change the font on anything. You know, you could, you could define it for a table, you could define it for a row, you could define it for a TD, or you could go in and define uh, based on a class or an ID, you know. If one class, if there was something specific about one class, I could assign an ID to that row and have it in bigger font, all right, or whatever. There's a few things we still need to wrap up with this, a few styling things, a few additional tags, um, and things, some of which are, are, are valuable for styling purposes, some of which are valuable for accessibility purposes. So we'll finish that up on Tuesday next week. The remaining week and a half, all right, will be devoted to making sure you get everything you need to do to wrap up your project, if you need extra assistance or peer reviews or whatever. And also will be devoted to getting a taste of JavaScript. All right. The idea is that we want to... Um, cover all three of the web standard technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And while our focus has been on those two, it's kind of like we at least have to address JavaScript so you get the full picture, even if you're not an expert in the JavaScript. All right, so we'll see you over in lab. <laughs>